and then use them for forced labour, sex slavery, and organ harvesting. Uh, and wait, when these... What is this? My, what is this? My Rimworld playthrough? <laughs> Jeez. Hello, hello everybody, it's your boy Prof Chuff. we're back again with another Mad Lad video. This is Mad Lad Don, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Alejo, it's Alejo, Alejo, Garza Thomas. I don't know, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but let's go. I talked about how some brave Korean American shop owners armed themselves and defended their livelihoods against okay. the violent mob. Okay, this story serves as an inspiring tale to many people, whether it be for purely defending the Second Amendment in the US, or as a general message to encourage people to make a stand against those that wish to do them harm. We mostly associate stories like this happening just in America, but today's mad lad was a proud Mexican. A Mexican who was willing to defend everything he had against one of the most violent the cartel. cartels Goddamn. in the world. Yo, listen, Mexico, you, you, you're scary, bro. Like, those cartels, they, uh, unfortunately, I've seen a little bit of the shit they've done, like, popping heads off, putting them in play. Yeah, yeah is crazy over there. Loco. Don Alejo, Alejo. Garza Tamez. Hey, the fuck? Your boy raid? Your boy raid? You got some boy raid? Your boy raid child legends here? Huh? Yeah, is your boy here? But well, before we get into the mad lads, it is in fact your boy raid child legends. The hottest game on the Play Store with almost a perfect score and well over 400 champions for you to collect. Currently, I am still trying to 3 star everything in this? the story mode. Look, I'm, I'm trying, it's a lot harder than it Oh, looks. wait, this is But my new. favorite thing is still slapping oh. people around in the PvP arena. The well, game has 13 playable factions, like the there High Elves, who in the story are the good guys, depending on your perspective, and their queen is a very powerful immortal sorceress. Yo. The elves Is use not very powerful old fantasy? magic and are allied with the banner lords and the sacred order. Bro, this looks so much like Warhammer Fantasy. It's very often hard to tell whose side they're really on. And last month, Raid released its latest update, the Doom Tower. 120 floors of hard Scratch challenges and even well harder granted. bosses. Just so you know. But the harder the challenges, the better the rewards. So click my link down below to get Raid Shadow Legends, and if you are a new player, you will get 50 gems, an XP booster, some energy refills, an ancient shard, and the champion Bulwark, who is very helpful Bulwark. in fighting through the Doom Tower. Only three stars, these rewards though. are only available they to new players and only for on. the next 30 days, and you can find these rewards here in your inbox. Don Alejo was born sometime in 1933 Very in the true. small town of Allende, located in the Mexican state of Nuevo Leon. And just a heads up, my uh, Spanish is non-existent. Same, bro. So I apologize in advance if <laughs> I completely butcher the pronunciation of some things. Don Alejo's father owned a sawmill in the nearby sawmill. woods and he would teach Don how to chop down trees and prepare the wood for sale. Okay. When he got a bit older, Don would be responsible for reaching out to buyers in nearby towns and transporting the wood to them. Eventually, the family business was doing so well that they were able to open their own stores in the towns of Allende and Monte Morelos. Nice. Whilst helping manage his family's business, Don Alejo became your typical family man and a pillar of the community. He had a reputation for working hard and being very reliable. Nice. His friends would even go as far as to say that a promise from Don Alejo was as good as a legal contract. He would also go out of his way to help members of the community who had fallen on hard times as the methods for manufacturing and storing ice cream became more efficient, 
many fruit plantations in Mexico ah. suffered because of the intense competition. Rather than just letting his local orange plantation go bust, orange. Don Alejo helped the owners convert their land into a chicken ranch so that they still had a viable business and therefore <laughs> wouldn't be kicked off of their land. During his free nice time, guy. Don Alejo loved to go fishing and hunting, which he had done since he was a child. He loved it so much that he would help establish one of Allende's first ever hunting, fishing and shooting clubs along with his friends. And it was here that he began to collect a huge number of sports guns. guns and he became known as one of the region's finest ever marksmen. Okay, yeah, I, I can... In the business, yes, we, can tell. we call this foreshadowing. Yeah, I can tell where we're going. When okay. they had earned enough money from the family business, <laughs> Don Alejo and his brother <laughs> both chipped in to buy a massive plot of land. It was right next to the Presa Vicente Guero Lake, which was located near Victoria City, the capital of okay. the state of Tamaulipas. Tamaulipas. The brothers would split the land between them, with Don Alejo taking the part which was known as the San Jose Ranch. He would use the ranch to How raise chickens the land? and other farm animals, and he would also contribute to the local economy by hiring ranch hands to help him maintain the farm. He would travel back to his home in Allende during the week to help run the family business, but he always returned to the ranch on weekends. He okay. would typically use the time to relax with his family yeah, that's a big and family. enjoy I should, the land. <laughs> that he had worked so hard to get. Uh, awesome. I'm not some kind of filthy redditor that spouts the word wholesome a whole lot, but... Oi. Oi. <laughs> Don Alejo genuinely seems yes. like a very wholesome, wholesome guy. guy. He took care of his family, he Good helped guy. out his friends, and he just seemed to be a major pillar of any community that he became a part of. But just like in any good old spaghetti western, the shining hero of our story is eventually confronted by the evil bandits. On the 13th of November, 2010, 2010. some members of the infamous... Wait, 2010, he was born 1930-something, so he's like 70-something, 80 years old? Zeta's cartel had approached the now 77-year-old Don Alejo. The Los Zetas had their eye on Don Alejo's ranch because they wanted to use the ranch as an Drugs. outpost for their drug-running operations in the area. So they had gone down to convince Don Alejo to make a <laughs> generous donation to them of his ranch ah. within 24 hours. But before we Very go generous. on, I want to give you a bit of an overview as to who the Los Zetas cartel were to really highlight okay. what Don Alejo was up against. The Los Zetas were formed in 1997 by former members of the Mexican Special Forces who had actually received Oi. training Oi. from the US Special Forces. However... Instead of fighting against the cartels, which they was became, their unit's intended yo, purpose. Next level strategy, go into the military, finish special uh, people training. I know, I'm a special person as well, just not the good special kind. And then make a cartel when your goal was to fight the cartel. I mean, that, it, it's kind of smart, but it's fucked up, but it's kind of smart though. They instead decided to defect from the Mexican military and instead join the cartels. They were initially an enforcement arm of the Gulf Cartel. Gulf? But eventually, through their advanced military training, they became powerful enough to split off and become a completely independent organization in 2010. And they named themselves Los Zetas. By 2012, they would secure operational supremacy in over half of Mexico's states. These territories were mainly focused near the Texas border and Mexico's southeastern coastline. 
and they Jeez. very quickly became known as Mexico's that 50 most cal? brutal that and cal? violent cartel. Bro, they got grenades. They are Yo, brutal. they got grenade launcher. Yo, they got some crazy shit in here. My guy. This ain't no joke. Cartel. Their brutality came from the group's founding principle, which stated that if you frighten your enemy enough, True. you may defeat him without having to fight. Morale is important. And because of this, rival cartels were actually forced to become more brutal themselves to prevent them from being taken over by Los Zetas. So the reason that cartel going, well, violence it? seems to have exploded in Mexico over the last couple decades is because of Los Zetas. We all know that organised crime can be pretty brutal at the best of times, but what did the Los Zetas do that made them particularly okay. evil? Okay. Torture? Well... I, For starters, the they were ah, known to stop. kidnap innocent civilians, journalists, and political rivals. Sorry. And then use them for forced labour, sex slavery, and organ harvesting. Uh, and wait, when these... What is this? My, what is this? My Rimworld playthrough? <laughs> Jews were Sorry. no longer of any use. They would be sent to places known as kitchens that the gang had set up. And the purpose of these kitchens was to I... kill the hostages and then incinerate their bodies in ovens okay, they didn't eat or them. dissolve their bodies in acid baths <laughs> or feed the bodies Never to mind. alligators. Oh, okay, alligators, the not humans. were also very well known for kidnapping rivals or family members of rivals and then brutally dismembering them while they were still alive. Of course. On camera. Okay. No, and then please they stop. would upload these videos Live onto the internet. Okay. The Los Zetas took part in pretty much every single diabolical act you can think of. Absolutely everything. Organ it's harvesting, keyboard. massacres, assassinations, kidnapping, extortion, drug trafficking, human trafficking, you name it. Desco these trafficking. guys did it. They would take part in virtually any criminal activity that would make them money. The Los Zetas leaders were obviously extremely brutal themselves, with one boss actually ordering his men to cut off the face of an innocent man for the awful cut, wait, crime cut off the face of dating one of his female relatives one of the Los Zetas bosses named Mo listen bro how, how big are your uh, cajones for you to date uh, a gang leaders I mean unless he didn't know but damn bro. Moises Escamilla May was personally responsible for the beheadings of 12 innocent people before he was arrested in 2008. But the good news is that he recently died in prison on the 8th of May 2020 due to catching COVID-19, oh, which is wow. pretty much the only good thing that it's done at this point. Yeah. There was also another brutal episode involving a regional Los Zetas boss called Mariano Milan Vasquez and he had actually My taken boy's got 15 a chins. six year old girl and in front of her parents he killed her please nah, nah thank you yeah thank let's you let's just skip this part thank you and if that wasn't enough to drive home just how uh, disgusting uh, uh, we, uh, the Los Zetas nah, are uh, uh, one of good, the gang's former good. kingpins a man named Heriberto <sighs> Lazacano was actually famous for getting newly initiated cartel members to eat the hearts of recently killed victims. And he would also very often feed people to the lions and tigers that he kept on his estate. However, he also acquired the taste for human flesh himself, more specifically human flesh from the male buttocks. 
Wait, hear that? Wait. This man eats ass. Bro, it's not what they mean when you say eat it. What? One of the things that he would do to the victims that he planned to eat, he would make them take a warm bath for three hours and make sure that they were in a nice, relaxed mood before he killed them. And this was to apparently tenderize Flavor. the meat mm. and stop any adrenaline from making the meat too tough. And he would then have his arse cooked in lemon and served on toast. So why have I just told you all of this? Why did Those I just tell tests. you a bunch of horrible stuff I'm not that has too no sure, doubt bro. left you feeling disgusted and miserable? The reason I told you all of that is so that you could get an idea of what absolute maniacs, what completely irredeemable subhuman fucks. scum Don Alejo was dealing with when the Los Zetas gang members and, approached him. And, and the scariest thing is, this ain't like a hundred years ago. This ain't some Godfather type shit. This is 2010. It's like 11 years ago. It's it's probably still ongoing. That's that's a that's some scary shit. And approached his ranch. It's still happening. I also told you all of this so that at the end of the video, you will be in a very very good mood. Okay. So sure. back to Don Alejo <laughs> and his ranch. Okay. Now, given the circumstances, I absolutely would not have blamed him for simply. Cutting his losses, yeah. handing over... I mean, even if he's not afraid about his own life, he has a pretty big family and he seems to care about his family, so... His damn, property bro. and moving back to Allende. Yet, despite being fully aware of what he was up against, when the Los Zetas asked him to hand over his ranch, Don Alejo told them, You want it? Take Come it. and get it. I'll be waiting. The Damn. Los Zetas then left Don Alejo's ranch after telling him that they would be back. I will be I back. I think the reason that Don Alejo told them to stick it where the sun don't shine was probably because he thought that he had already lived a full life by this point. He was 77 years old and he absolutely didn't want to give away his treasured property to some cartel thugs and what better way to end a fulfilled life than dying for your Kill principles <laughs> so after telling his workers to return home and take the weekend off Don Alejo got to work in preparing his defences using his massive collection of firearms that he had gathered over the years Don Alejo would line up the weapons and ammunition beside every door and window okay. to the ranch house. This was so that he could quickly defend himself from each direction without needing to awkwardly carry guns or move around with bulky ammo pouches between positions. After this, Don Alejo got what little rest he could before the gang turned up at about 4am the 4 next morning. The gang had expected Don Alejo to immediately cower in fear before them when they turned up in several vans and trucks. But well, instead, wait, they were greeted wait, to... Wait, how many people went there? Several vans and trucks? What? The defiant Don Alejo hurling insults, abuse and threats at them, telling them that if they wanted his property so badly, they'd have to kill him. As a last so... attempt to frighten Don Alejo into submission, one of the gang members fired a warning shot just above his property. This would have scared many men and possibly made them surrender, but Don Alejo is not just any man. So his Shut response back. to the warning shot, instead of cowering in fear, was to instantly draw his own pistol and immediately double tap not one but two of the gang members <laughs> killing them instantly the cartel members did not expect this they oh. really did not expect this 
Surprise they stood Pikachu there, face. Like, frozen for a few seconds, just looking at these two dead gang members and going, did did he did he just did, did he just do that? <laughs> so in a panic, they started to return fire. And you would think that with their, you know, superior numbers and the absolute hail of bullets they were raining down on the ranch house, that would have been enough to kill Don Alejo. But while they were, you know, busy focusing on shooting at the ranch house, they didn't realise that Don Alejo had actually moved to a different firing position in the house. And by the time they stopped firing, Must be a big they ass looked house, around huh? and saw two more dead gang members. Damn. Okay. <laughs> because because Don Alejo, good. while they were all busy shooting, had picked off two more of them with a hunting rifle. Oof. The firefight was now in full swing, and two of the gang members charged at the what front door smoke, of Don's bro? house and kicked it in and got inside, which would have been very bad news for Don Alejo if, if he didn't know that that is exactly what Booby they that shit. So upon charging into the house, the two gang members were greeted with Don Alejo staring right at them. Oh. With a shotgun. <laughs> Two more down. <laughs> At this point during the battle, the gang members were becoming increasingly impatient and yeah. also panicking a little because so many of them were getting killed. So they started firing high-powered rifles and launching grenades at the house Oof. to try and finally draw Don Alejo out. But they struggled to do even this because they were still under heavy fire from Don Alejo, who kept confusing them about his location okay. by constantly moving to different firing nice. positions within the house. After the battle had gone on for five minutes... The gang had finally gotten cold feet and fled from the ranch because they were worried that because they were so close to the state capital that it would only be a matter of time before the army would arrive and put a stop to the Not shootout. the police, the army? The Mexican marines did eventually show up not too long after the battle had ended and what they seen was a house riddled with over Jesus. 900 bullets and massive craters in the walls caused by the grenade blasts. When Bro. the Marines entered, they actually expected to find a small group of ranchers defending the house, given that they had to stand over the corpses of several dead gang members to actually get inside. But what they found instead was an empty house littered with toppled guns and empty shell casings. They called out to any occupants of the house saying that they were the marines and it was safe to come out now. But they got no answer. So they started searching the house. Oh, he died? And upon checking the bathroom, Aww. they found Don Alejo slumped on the floor. During the massive hail of bullets, yeah, Don had actually been shot very many times and his body was riddled with shrapnel from the grenade blasts. He had barricaded himself inside the bathroom to make his last stand, but sadly, he died of his wounds before the Marines got there. And when the Marines found him, he still had his rifle <laughs> in his hands and it was pointed at the door. <laughs> now, we don't know a lot of the exact details of this case because despite this being a massive story, the local media refused to report on it for an entire week. This was because the Los Zetas had massive power over the local ah. government and they were able to successfully intimidate yeah, they, state officials. They look pretty weak, don't they? It's probably did some shit with the gangs, with the other gangs. They're like, these guys are the strong ones. You couldn't kill an old man in his villa. What? Officials and journalists into silence. The reason that they did this is because it doesn't really do much for your image when your international violent drug cartel gets absolutely wrecked by <laughs> a 77-year-old man. However, How the Millennial News Channel braved the threats of the gang and they defiantly reported this story 
to the entire nation of Mexico. The story completely blew up over Mexican social media and Don Alejo rapidly became a beloved cultural icon within the country. The main reason people really loved Don Alejo wasn't just because he managed to single-handedly defend his property from what was at least 10 heavily armed attackers, but it was because what he did was a massive symbol for the people of Mexico. For decades, corrupt government officials and cartels have endlessly gotten in the way of ordinary Mexicans just trying to live their own lives, where they have to constantly deal with threats and even outright theft of their property and even their homes. But what Don Alejo had done by defending his ranch was take a stand against this entire system. And what makes it even better... Good guy. Can't say he died, but... Just because you die after the battle doesn't mean that you didn't win the battle. <laughs> Still counts. <laughs> Pyrrhic victory. Is, Let's call it a Pyrrhic victory. never return to the San Jose ranch. Oh, nice. Meaning that they had lost a bunch of men and completely humiliated themselves in front of the entire country for nothing. I think another reason that they intimidated the press wasn't just to prevent them from attracting unwanted attention and possibly getting investigated. What? I think the main reason that they didn't want the story getting out is because the story itself sends a powerful message. It shows that the Los Zetas could be defeated. Unfortunately, despite the huge media attention and being a massive cultural rallying point they catch for them? the people of Mexico, no official investigation into Don Alejo's murder would take place. What? Nor would any charges be issued against any of the Los Zetas cartel members. What? It just goes to show how bad the cartel problem still is to this day. Bro. It's estimated by the BBC that homicide and kidnappings by Mexican gangs have only gone up since 2017. What the this fuck? This means that a lot more yeah, innocent going people to are going to have Jeez. to die before the Mexican government can bother their useless corrupt arses to do anything about it. Why are they not doing anything Despite about it? Despite this though, Don Alejo continues to live on in the hearts of Mexicans to this day. The country's news channels and websites celebrated the 10th anniversary of his last stand, describing him as having died fighting as the best soldier, with dignity, honour and courage. Musicians have also composed at least two oh. corridors in Don Alejo's honour, a corridor being the cultural dancing music in ah. Mexico, and you can actually find these on YouTube. I don't understand the a same. word of what's being That's said, same, bro. but it's catchy. It do be like that. Just like most of the stuff you find in the charts. There was also an independent short film that was put on YouTube as huh? well, which recreates a lot of Don Alejo's final moments. Don Alejo has even inspired comic book artists in Europe. An Italian publisher called Panini Comics have actually released a full visual novel oh. based on Don Alejo's life and it's turned out to be very popular in countries I need to like check it France out. and Belgium. Though I think it's pretty generous calling Belgium a country. The Roof Koreans were inspirational for Americans as they embodied the idea of the okay, bro, ordinary chill, man chill. defending his livelihood against a violent mob. And much like them, Don Alejo Garza Tamez is viewed as a living representation of what ordinary Mexicans aspire to. They want to be left alone and be able to fight back against the thugs that are ruining their country. That's why I think that we should look at Don Alejo's story as a cautionary tale. Don't give up your guns, don't give up your freedom, 
and don't give up your country to people that just want to sell you down the river. May we all aspire to be even 1% of the Chad that Don Alejo was. <laughs> True shit. Viva la Mexico. <laughs> it's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody subscribe. <laughs>